Hey there, everybody. Holy crap, my volume is loud. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, hey, it's the Dork the Table. Stuff. How y'all doing? This is Grammy Mary and my co-host... Flash. <laughs> I said it fast so you would hear it clearly. Wow, thank you. I truly do appreciate it. And we are at the Dork Table, and I see lots and lots of people in the RLM. But let me take a peek real quick here. I've, I've been slackering, and I just finally posted it on the Facebook feed. That we're live now because <laughs> i've been a slacker okay uh, no biggie a slacker. i know that means someone that just ain't quite up to snuff not not hey, doing their job no, no oh is that me or you me oh okay because i'm i'm the one that posts this shit all over the place so I do see the Grimmy shared us over on that effing site, though. So thank you, Grim. Truly do appreciate it. And sorry about falling asleep during the Freakers Ball last night. Wow. <laughs> I, wow. Well, it was cold. And so I went and I put my Eeyores on, you know, which wow. I'm not wearing them today because I've got someone coming over shortly after we get done to, um, on the radio. <sighs> And they're going to fix my garage door. So I'm actually oh, yeah, that's dressed. What they call it now. Yeah. Hey, you want to come fix my garage door? <laughs> Don't you need a garage? Shut up. <laughs> fix it. You need to fix the rollers on my on my door. <laughs> yeah. My, yeah. <laughs> uh, never tried it on one of those. You've given me something to think about. <laughs> Oh, too funny. Okay, I see that Sock Puppet shared us over here in the uh, corner pocket on Crush and Run. So thank you ever so much, Sock. And uh, let's see, who all is here? Oh, wow, look at all the fun people over yeah. here in the RLM. Dang, I'm going to actually have to scroll to say hey there, hi there, ho there to everybody. Um, you want me to see if I can I can break the record, Flash Rooney head? Oh, you, hey, you do what you feel like doing. Okay. Just I'll let me warn you. After you have said hello and hi there and ho there to all the fine folk out in Radio Land, I have a special dork announcement. Oh, okay. Well, let's see there how let's see how fast I can do this. Okay. Yeah, you just try that. Why don't you try that? Go Come on, try and be that. flashy. <laughs> 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 okay, we got the missionary Put man, Asmo, up it. top, fo closely followed by Barman, then the lovely yes, Beth Barman. Z yes. and Grimdork. <laughs> yeah, then the lovely you Kate. Trust no one. Alias is in the house. Double dosing of Chloe. Flash Dork is here, who is the co-host and the creator of the Dork Table. Also, we have Free Enslaved, Grammy DQ, which means Dork Queen, for those of you that are challenged, because that's not ice cream, <laughs> it's Dork Queen. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I also uh, see I.B. Don C. as well as Java, 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 Dr. Two. And looky there, Paul Bunyan, P. Bunyan is here, as well as Smokin' Taco. Ooh, a Smokin' Taco. Smokin'. Yeah, that, you're supporting Rob already. That that he comes from uh, um, not having enough <laughs> lube. <laughs> <laughs> I also see Smokin' Rob, who will be coming on right after us. Oh, Rob, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I also see Phantom is in the as in the opera, ha ha, and Chelsea. Oh, wow. was, <laughs> You're wow. welcome. That right ear went, jeez, that was like an ice pick. <laughs> well, you said you were gonna get me back for being mean to cause someday. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I also see Chalcedonia is in the house, as well as Dakota, and Happy Dork Bee. She's such a happy dork little Dork Bee. Bee. How you doing, Bee? As well as J Dread, aka Hansel. Hey, Hansel. I also see Kozu is in the house, and 
Bot. <laughs> and looky there, Nenson Dubois, such a fun name to say, as well as North... <laughs> Damn it, I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> North Force is also here. And looky there, the lovely Rain is in the house. Hey, Rain. I love Rain. I prefer Rain to Snow, but different kind of Rain. I also see, and Anon is in here, RLM 37811 is in the house, as well as Sock Puppet. Still haven't figured out where I'm going to put them batteries. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, Tom W. So, bada bing, bada boom, eight minutes in, and I'm done. There, I'm done. My work here is done. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Now i got to quit playing my game, because... I had 12 minutes left, according... Well, never mind. There you go. Anyway, Miss Mary. Oh. Okay, Sock says Miss he can't Mary. hear you very well. So, let me oh, see. Yep, yep, 10 now, four. It could Was be, that me again? It could be on my end. Let me it see. It probably is. It's oh, always shush. on your end. Yes, ma'am. Or you could move your mic down just a little bit as well. Yeah, I did. See, look, it's right in front of my smoker. Okay, but we always have issues on the radio. They were having them last night on the Freakers Ball. Yeah. You know, and eh, you might not think that they're uh, loud enough, but uh, yeah, they're loud enough. Maybe you're not listening loud enough. Oh, oh I hey, wrote a, that could be. I, I wrote a fun thing for the dork table today. Oh, and you did? I got, yes, you inspired me to write. The blurb, you know, I do the blurbs that you use for whatever promoting you do. Uh huh. On the, uh, well, I'm stalling so I can open the damn thing because I can't remember what I wrote. I just know it was funny when I wrote it. Well, I it know made, where it is. Well, I'm getting there. Well, so I'm slower than snail shit. I have eight more minutes. <laughs> I got, I got, okay, I got it. This is short, sweet, to the point, and everybody wants one. Okay, now, D's and D's, and listen closely, because if you're not fast, you're going to miss it. Today, will from this moment on be recognized as Judgment Day. I will judge you, you will judge me, and we will judge them. You will in turn judge I, and they will be judging them. Follow me? I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. Now, if I get a majority judgment of 51%, you will do as you are told. If we fall short with a pitiful 49, I will be the winner. I'm sure all this is easy to follow. We call it fucking the pooch. A recent study indicates my indoctrination thinks your indoctrination sucks. All this and more here at the table. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 yada, 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 yada. It's okay. It's my version of government. Well, yeah. It it makes it when you sit down and look at this crap that I wrote. It makes as much fucking sense as writing a law in half English and half Latin does. And then not telling anybody which words in Latin are you using in English. Okay. Remember. Okay. Think back in your time. I listened to your show one night and. You were still amused at Bill Clinton uh, when he was being questioned in front of Congress about his little, you know, poking the donkey thing. And he said, define the word is. And everybody had a good laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Bill Clinton's so funny. No, Bill Clinton was a lawyer and he knew if he didn't ask what the hell does this word mean and he answered to it without knowing specifically first, he's tied to his answer. You can't change your answer on the record after you give it. So you have to understand the fucking question before you answer something. And the public is so numb to admiralty court and, and the legalities that really exist. Like Hal fights every week with it. Why don't people get it? Because it's based on a misdirection. That's why. And what I wrote made me, I, what inspired me to write it was that how we live in our societies with all these bullshit 50 word laws and then you, you pass somebody in the street and you bump into them some something happens and you say excuse me and you go on your way but that guy's got a right to take you to court and sue you for assault <laughs> you know a hate crime 
he was black and he didn't like your whiteness, so he's going to sue you for it. And these things exist in societies now. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, as crazy and bumbly and mumbly as that just was, I came up with this as a comparison to government. See, and, and what I got out of that whole thing is judging, and I want my black robe. Yeah, I noticed that. Damn it. Because you mentioned something else on the Skype about it. Yeah, it was high. Yeah, I didn't take it that far. But sure. You want to be on the select panel of nine that oversee millions with your relic fucking description of an opinion. Get the fuck out of my face. That's what I want you to do, Supreme Court. No, no. I took it as I want a black robe. <laughs> oh, a really, a a really warm and fuzzy one. Oh, you had a girl moment then. Yeah. See, I, I wouldn't go there. W men take clothes off of women. We don't put them on you. Are you insane? No. There's no fun in dressing you. That's just to go out and fight the snow. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not going to go out and fight that. <laughs> My dogs are out playing in it right now. They actually wanted to go out and play in the snow. It's like, okay, you go right ahead. You have fur. Mm-hmm. Well, their whole design is built for that, though. Yeah. Being outside. They're animals. We're animals, too, but over time we've been, you know, softened so we can't face life's brutality, you know, without an electric thing to do it with. <laughs> a car, and a computer, and all the trappings. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well... You know, think of the bad side of this economic collapse that I've been praying for since 1974 or 5. Mm -hmm. If it comes, I'm going to have to really work. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. Isn't that something? But on the good side is I think I'm healthy enough to perform whatever um, necessary things come up to secure food and whatnot. Well, you know. Work, there's working and then there's, you know, doing things to feed yourself that aren't necessarily, don't feel like work because you like doing them. You know, like with me, a lot of people would say, oh my God, I hate yeah. to work in the yard. It's just, it's, oh, yeah. I love doing that stuff. So, yeah. Go figure, huh? See, yeah. One, one man's burden because I don't. Cirque loves to be out playing in her garden and all that crap in the spring, the summer. And it's like. That's just work to me because I grew up in the city where, you know, what little bit of yard there was, guess who had to take care of it? You know, and I would have rather not. <laughs> See, and we had to do that too growing up, but you know, with <laughs> us, it, you know, and it was kind of one of those, we grew up with the whistle while you work mentality. Um, or at least that's kind of mm -hmm. what mom instilled in us was, you know, if, yeah. you, if you've got to do a job anyway, you may as well do it in a manner that makes it fun for you to do that job. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we would go out and, and that, that's one of the things that I've, I've had forever, it seems like. You know, going out and pulling weeds, we had to do that all the time in the garden. But it was, if you're mad at someone, call that weed that name and then pull it. <laughs> You know, and so it made it to where you enjoyed going out what you're and, doing. Yeah. you know, going out and pulling Stomping. those weeds because you were taking out your aggression and your frustration <laughs> on that person, and yet you weren't oh. Oh, hurting anybody. Yeah. 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 It was constructive violence. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. People don't think of that. You know, I've noticed that in, in my life is. Folks are real quick to jump and get mad and start yelling, ah, I'll kick your ass and shit like that. Get all negative and nasty. Yeah, and whereas it, I go, why, why you, I'm going to go out and I'm going to pull weeds and I'm going to name every damn one of them you. And they're going to sit there and go, what? But that gives me time to get away. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking for myself in what kind of situations with people in life. Where was I ever involved in a in in a verbal communication with somebody else 
that sprang to a, a, a full-blown disagreement argument. but And I can always think of just females. Guys don't do that with me. Hmm. They're, they're always reasonable. I'm so little. You know, it's very deceiving to live this life um, as a tall person or average whatever normal height is. And, and the myth of, oh, that poor short guy. And it's such a story because we get treated so much better because of our shortness that it kind of, it's like like Cartman being naked walking across the stage to distract all the adults. Oh, that kid's naked. Not the kid's got a star in his eye. Fuck. They don't care about that anymore. That kid over there is naked. You know? And that's how uh, people treat short people. Yeah. And well. It, but, yeah, but it it's not talked about. It's like, poor us. And I, I look back at a whole lifetime ago and, wow, I've had it so easy. I don't know what they're complaining about. Well, and that's the difference between people looking at everything as a negative or something to mm. hold them down or put them down. And then there's people that look at, at what others consider a disadvantage and they go, are you shitting me? Seriously? Oh, no, this ain't no disadvantage for me. Mm -hmm. so. Right, because you, well, one thing being small I did learn was to, to use balance and um, I guess balance and experience after after a period of time in certain ways that make me more appear more capable than i truly am i just know how to use balance and it, it impersonates strength and it's really not i'm not doing anything that you couldn't do but to some people they'll go fuck how did you do that i couldn't do that yeah you could just don't know how which goes to like the larry thing you know when he was talking about lead skeleton's um coral castle that he built it was this little bitty guy building this big castle out of huge pieces of coral and it was just unheard of yeah the whole leverage thing i uh, see right, circles well, yeah she came up to say hi mm -hmm. it well it's that kind of thinking in life that's so obscure the thinking outside of the box yeah, it's so much easier to be liked by other people and go along with the crowd and think you're right. Or even know you're not right, or maybe you could be wrong, but ah, the crowd, I don't want to stand up from the crowd. Let's not do that. Yeah. Hey, you know, in your whole shortness thing, looks like Free mm. Enslaved is going to go for a tall walk. <laughs> oh, I guess I bored one way. Sorry. No, he just said be treated better because of shortness going for a tall walk. As opposed well, to a short no, walk. If you're a tall guy, think about it. Sometimes if you just move too fast around people, they, they flinch. Yeah. I've seen it. I've had a lot of big buddies in my lifetime. Over that They're all taller than me. But some were exceptionally taller than me. And the contrast was comical. And uh, what the other guy would do would instill, like, just reaction out of people. And he was just being, just moving. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and the intimidation factor of, you know, some people are just scary to uh, other people. And when you're small, you got this advantage. You look like a kid. So a lot of people just think I'm I'm a kid until like they get close enough to see my age. Oh, I'm just a kid that's you know got a lot of attitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and then once I'm you know met face to face, then they go, oh, you're just an old man with an attitude. That's all. No big deal. Yeah, Free says that Coral Castle is not far from him either. Cool. Oh, who who said that? Free enslaved. Oh, if, then you've been there, right? I'm. Let's see. Let me open up the chat and see if there's anything on there about it. But yeah, I I actually uh, was taking there in uh, I think something like ninety or ninety one when I was in Miami, and I'd never even heard of the guy in my whole life, right? But I met somebody and hey, do you, well, let's go to this Coral Castle thing. Went, oh, okay, let's go. And when I was there, I couldn't believe, well, the front door at the time in the 90s had uh, been moved off its pivot and you weren't allowed to move it. But everything else in the place was um, exactly what they said it was, except for the door. And isn't that cool? You know, that, that made me think of how many little things had to fall into play in order for you to 
go to Coral Castle and then have that life-changing experience. It's yeah, funny well, how how yeah. little bitty things. I see Circle joined the chat. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey, honey. <laughs> Hi, hon. <laughs> Hey, if you make me a cup of coffee, I'll say a bunch of nice shit about you on the radio. <laughs> See how you are. Hell yeah. You know, baffle them with bullshit. That's my motto. Well, I've already had a pot of coffee this morning, so I'm I'm doing the water thing right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I know. I felt ranty about government for some reason. I don't know. I usually just... Don't, but I got a quick joke for you if you're yep from one of my dumb jokes. Sure, go for it. All right. Pick a state like Nebraska. Okay, Nebraska. And in the state of Nebraska, there's this farmer, and his name is Farmer Brown. Okay. Farmer Brown has a mule, and that mule's name is Brownie. And Farmer Brown's mule is so capable and strong, he can pull... 20 times the land of any other mule in the entire county that he lives in. Well, all the other farmers got together. Farmers got together and said, hey, let's get that mule and buy him from Farmer Brown. So they go up to him and he says, well, to sell him, I want $200. And the farmers, what? Are you out of your mind? That's 10 times what any mule is worth in this land. He says, okay. And they all, they're talked it over, and their greed overpowered their common sense, and they bought the mule. And the very first morning, that mule's out there with the first farmer, and he's just plowing his little heart out, go, go, go. And then about noontime, it just fucking stops. So they bring him sweet water and carrots and apples to try to goad him to move. And this animal ain't budging. So now they're pissed off because Farmer Brown sold him a mule that didn't live up to what he said he would do. So they're going to hang him. And he says, if you let me down off this tree, i show you what to do, what the secret is with the mule. Uh, they've known each other for, so, okay, we'll give you this one last chance before we hang you. So they let him off, and he said, give me a tip, two by four. He walks over to the mule, and he smacks that fucker as hard as he can. The mule falls over, picks himself up, shakes off, and starts plowing. And he said, but Farmer Brown, when we sold, when you sold us that mule, you said that the key to his success was you got to give him a lot of love and attention. And he said, well, yeah, guys, but he, he's still a fucking mule. You got to get his attention first. Ah, ah, I see. Okay. okay. Now, I told you that all right, I'm going to tie it up for just two more minutes and then I'll, I'll get back to you here. Okay. But I told you that to mention this, right? We have uh, a world full of people living on different bits of land and all those people think that their bit of land is um, ruled, so to speak, by these leaders and these people that make all the decisions for them so that they can enjoy a, a life. Mm-hmm. And I think that the people that don't believe that story anymore are the ones that understood the joke I just told. Yeah. Because there's a, it's a beautiful story. It's nice to think, oh, the government's here for us. Oh, they're protecting us from evil. No, they are the evil that's pounding you in the ass end. They've, they've hijacked this thing and taken it and lied about it forever. And we don't really ever know what the truth is about shit until it's over. Yeah, because nobody smacked years. us upside the head and gotten our attention. Well, what did that bring to your mind right off the top? You, you seemed like. Well, to me, I mean, it was like with anything. You know, you can look mm -hmm. around and you can think, oh, things are going good or things are going bad, however they are going. And until someone comes up and smacks whether it's physically or verbally, smacks you upside the head and says, wait a minute here, why don't you check this shit out? And then your perspective shifts. That's what mm. came to my mind was, you know, uh. sometimes some you need that. You know, it's, it's like I, I say all the time. 
The difference between a pat on the back and a smack upside the head is location, location, location. Okay, and I, I'm going to, not to disagree with that at all, but I'm saying the core of that being a problem is that we're raised wrong. And, and then the, we, the civilized modern day man goes in there and saves them, you know. Oh, I got booted. And, and oh, uh, from the RLM? Yeah. Oh, ouch. Uh, I was having trouble staying connected to them earlier today, too. Well, I'll just reconnect, damn um, it. That'll learn uh, them. Well, yeah, that that will teach them. But you said you have a storm, and, you know, shit happens on this Internet crap all the time. Yeah. And, well, I've done a couple shows with Larry Woods about energy, free energy sources, alternatives to this alternatives to that and he's brought up a couple times that the people that that force this inferior um electricity source of energy on us know that they're going to get the results they get this is a plan it, it, it's an obsolete society because it's based on a waste base energy source and they want to act like they don't. Oh well, we're looking for we're answers, and no, they're hiding answers that they have, so that we'll continue to glue boards and nail shit together still, because there's better ways, and all that we do is just to make certain people wealthy and keep everybody else fighting amongst themselves. It's it's insane. How much longer can this go? Yeah, you know what? We actually lost internet for a minute there. Because mm. our stream stopped and everything. Uh-oh, was I pissing on my leg again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, okay. But we're well, back. And we're not black. No, we're not. But it's oh, going to be an interesting of... podcast today because... Mm. Oh, what? Usually it's boring? <laughs> okay, now... Well, yeah. No, it's just that uh, no. <laughs> I don't know how okay. I don't know how much of this is actually going to record on Spreaker. Okay, rascal, cut it out. So, oh wow, well, you know what? We'll live through it one way or the other, Mary. Yes, we will. You yes, know, we will. What we're what we're doing is we're trying to tell people there's a bad source of energy that is supplying your life, which is creating all the problems that you do have. They're not imaginary; they're real fucking problems. Mm -hmm. But all of them are based on deceit and bullshit. And to get around that, there's no way around it. I mean, we're all stuck with it somehow. Yeah. And, and I believe that the people that run all this shit, they know that. Or why would they do it? You know, instead, okay, here, here's what I think of government. What government should accomplish, not what they do, but what... But their goal should have been from the gate was what's best for everybody and how everybody can have it the best instead of this. You know, they call it a free market. But what it is is a competitive cutthroat backstabbing way to live to get shit you don't need so that you can be in, de in debt to a bank. Yeah. Well, and, and see. And, OK, go ahead. Well, OK. So given. All right. Well, let's use me and you. So. Given a choice of the society that I just gave you a roundabout, which would you choose? The one you're in or the one that I think should be? Uh, actually, I'm going to choose my reality because I kind of like my reality. So, there's the same thing. But you, yeah, you, you tilt my way on the money thing, though. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that a hungry person needs a meal. That's that's a that should be a fucking right, not speech that they can say they can take away from you. I don't know, but I mean, if you're going to have a fucking right, why wouldn't it be to food every day? What is wrong with it? Why are people so convinced that you must perform a task to get a thing to have a necessity? What the fuck is that about? Free market, my ass. It's slavery. Yeah. And then they threw in the, all the it, it, all these uh, 
gadgets, TV and movies and cars and, you know, the entertainment thing and sports and all this crap to distract us from, you know, if you get over 150 people, you're too big and you can't manage it anymore. It, it breeds thieves. Yes. Yes, it does. It, it's an overpopulation law. It's like a... What, like, Similar to a law of physics, it's something that no matter what you do it to, what you use as an, ex uh, as an example to do your experiment with, you're going to get the same results from rats to elephants. Because when you overpopulate, you control the damn abundance of the necessary necessary things a human being needs to live on. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Well. Okay, let's just assume this is not common knowledge and people don't think of this every day. But you know what people are taught to think about every day? They're taught to think about if you don't go out there and get it, someone else will and you'll do without. Okay, and what do you do before that? Get up, go to the bathroom. You go make, yeah, you go make yourself presentable to society in front of the mirror, you know? And they got their little guidelines. They make sure your hair's cut so your damn antenna won't work. <laughs> Clean, shave that face because all all that hair serves a purpose in your thinking life that you're not aware of. Yeah. And somehow or another, if you'll conform to certain standards, wear a suit and tie and cut your hair a certain way and work, shave your freaking face with sharp blades every morning, <laughs> it makes you a a better person <laughs> grimmy he got that um, now i'm not going to say for flash but i do know i've heard that number um, before and simon sinek said that they had actually somebody had done a study and in, in one of his talks he was talking about someone had done a study where the tipping point of uh, yeah. people and relationships and all that other fun stuff where things will start to break down is after 150. Yeah. Like like you have a difficult time remembering details and people's names and all that other fun stuff um, once you get past 150. Same thing mm. with employees. You know, if you have over 150 employees or co-workers, once you get out that size of a circle, then you have a difficult time keeping the details straight. Oh, yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, see, that's how I figured that the government wasn't lying about one thing or two things or even three. They were lying about everything. Because there was no other way to be that consistently fucked up <laughs> than to plan it that way. Even a fucking loser wins now and again. But you explain that fucking federal government. They can't do anything right. <laughs> well, and that's the whole purpose behind it. I mean, once something gets to a certain size, and let's say that 150 is the, um, the number... Mm. that you want to go with but it's just one let me pull a number out of my ass kind of thing i think but yeah, um, arbitrary once, yeah. yeah once you reach yeah. a certain tipping point yeah you know it's a balance you, you I, can I no longer police yourself with, whether it's an organization or a community or what have you and that's why you have to have the special ta 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 people that come in mm. with the shiny badges that have to police for you but once again you still have that tipping point so you know if say you have a police officer that patrols a certain area once it gets over that certain tipping point he can't police that area <laughs> anymore properly <laughs> grim <and> then, <laughs> RLM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i have trouble that's why a lot yeah. of people are sweetie yeah. or darlin or hun that is so yeah. much easier because I remember I, I, faces, but names, wow. But, you know, I deal I, with I the general public. Last week. I teased him that last week about the very thing to me. Because, you know, what's his name? The token Jew. Uh, Flash. That guy. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like that. Oh, I, nothing personal. You you forget. You know, it's like something you don't use every, every day. You don't need it. So <laughs> where to <Yeah>. go? <laughs> I dropped it. 
Yeah. Oh, and it's but, so funny. You know, people will call in where I work, and they'll just yeah. start talking to me, and it's and I'm, not identify themselves or anything. And I'm like, I know this voice. I know this voice. Can you please give me a clue as to who in the hell you are? Because I recognize the voice, but I have a hell of a... I mean, when you talk to 150, 200 people a day, I see you drinking that lovely coffee, you brat butt. But, you know, when you talk to <laughs> Thank you, Circle. a certain number of people every day, and they're different people every day, yeah, yeah. you recognize voices, but putting a name to that voice or... You know, I can put a car to that voice before I can put a name to that voice just because of the type of business that I do. <laughs> I can put a car. That was priceless. But Okay. It is. I understand yeah. that. I mean, yeah. your mental yeah. Rolodex can only can have so many memory cards in it before it, it doesn't roll freely anymore. And so mm. sometimes you have to spit out some of that shit, get it out of the way so you can spin that bad boy again. And that's, you know, sometimes you guys hear a weird background noise. That's my mental Rolodex trying to get going <laughs> again. <laughs> it's a... Uh, noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We come from the old school where they wrote shit down. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you can't please anybody in this world. Mm -mm. It's just the way it is. And that's why I just go about trying to please myself. And, and you know, so, and if other people are not harmed in that process mm -hmm. and um, some of them actually get a smile on their face as well, then, hey, okay, it's all good. <laughs> oh, I, <clears throat> I got teased about mentioning this on the, the last dork table, I think, but I'm going to do it again because, uh, we, at that time, needed 19. We were at 81 subscribers on the RLM on YouTube, so we could get a URL something. Yeah. I don't know. Vince told me it was something that would help the RLM on the YouTube thing. So, since then, it's up to 86. Whee! So, we got 14 to go. So, if there's anybody listening that's just never bothered to subscribe to the RLM on the YouTube link, and you want to help Grim out with the um, getting the URL, if it makes any difference, there you go. Subscribe to the channel. I think it's a personalized URL or some... Uh, some, hey. some techie... You know more than me. Than me. I, I don't know. I'm just you know, I'm just the gardener here. I, I, we're chip, 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 chip. Yeah, and you hate gardening. <laughs> Well, no, see, and over yeah, on no, Spreaker, we have 165 followers, so it's like, booyah! Right, and, you know, uh, there's so much going on that's not real. In this, <clears throat> see, this is the foundation of my it's all bullshit philosophy, is if you, if, if you live in a society that's willing to pretend something is wrong to get your attention so that they can justify passing a law to protect you. Uh, all you need to fix that is a little Vaseline because that'll make it not hurt so much because they're raping you, right? With your permit, please take my, I mean, you're not talking about money here. You're talking about your, you know, your dignity. And when you walk into a fucking airport now, some complete stranger wants to put their hands down your pants to see if you got any fucking extra yellow cake. Yeah. I mean, how I mean, it's it's insulting and rude. Hey. Now see, that reminds me of uh the May West thing. You got a mm. pistol in your pocket or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let me uh let me go ask my wife. Uh, I'll get a ruling from the judge and I'll get back to you on that one, Mary. <laughs> Miss Circle might not like <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. Soik is a good sport. Yeah, and Cripe, she remembers the names of uncles to wives of people she met 15 years ago. But can mm. you put them to the proper faces? Now, mm. there, because I remember lots yeah. and lots of names. It's putting them on the proper face that I have trouble with. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not really a people person, I think, is, is my biggest... Um, bit of fortune you know i've always been around a small group at a time 
I don't like big groups. Big groups make me uncomfortable. See, and I didn't used to have a problem with that, but anymore I don't. It's not <laughs> yeah. that I don't like big groups because I function just fine in them, the, the ones that I've mm. been in of late, but I just avoid mm. them. You know, it's it's too hard well, for me to have a one-on-one. -on -one it. con it's well, it's hard for me to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh -huh. with someone, or even a conversation with four or five people, when you're in a group that you've got that much. I think it's the background noise. It just it it overwhelms the the brain circuits that are still functioning. <laughs> well, I'm not really a uh, an advocate. Of all that intelligence crap people brag about anyway. I think you're I as intelligent that, as you I, you think you are. Well, well that. okay, but I don't have I don't hold somebody more valuable over another person because of the skill that they have. Even if I need that skill, I still they're just people to me. I'm not you know the bricklayer and the banker both the same. Yeah. They both have yeah. different skill sets. The difference between the two is the banker forces you to deal with him. And the bricklayer asks nicely. True. Okay, but see, when you deal in something like that, that's so aggressive and you feel so uncomfortable when you do it, there's a reason for it. You're not supposed to fucking do it. Yeah. That's why you don't feel good doing it. Yeah. And. When you're a grown-up, what you're taught to, well, pull your pants up and be a man. Deal with Wait it. Wait a minute. This guy this guy wants me to be his personal fucking slave for 30 years so that I don't got to live in a cardboard box. It's not fair. And then you'll get talked right out of that because they don't understand your side of what you're saying. Oh, you just want everything for free. Well, yeah, I think everybody on, on the planet, all from one side to the other, instead of one guy having $80 billion... I think everybody should just be able to get what they need. Yeah. Got three basic needs. Fill those needs. And if you want a stereo, then go to commerce. You know, see, and, there's no reason for all this greed. I don't understand. See, and in my little, my little unicorn fart world. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, with I know. sprinkles I, and I glitters. Make, I'd just I as soon do away time. with commerce altogether. You know, get mm. rid of money because people, yeah. are, once you have mm. that, people are going to, and, and that's a mindset thing that's going to have to change prior to the, the getting rid of money, <laughs> you know, is people are going to have to stop this whole, but I want to have more than that person over there. Really? Why yeah. are you going to use know. that more than that person I over don't. there? Or do you just want to have more so that they have less? Status, Mary. I, I get Green that whole... Status. Social status. Well, look, if, you're, if you were a slave, that this is what defines the slave. The slave protects the master. That's exactly the point. If a man is going to justify, oh, well, yeah, but you got to do this and you got to. Well, that's because you're living in a time where we've grown past. And society, the, all the bullshit society plays on us is just to get the results that they're, they want. They're getting what they want. And they're using fuel and they're using food sources to accomplish and water to accomplish that. But most people don't realize it. They don't get it. It's, not be, it's beyond their comprehension. Okay, because it's a pie in the sky, uh, what, atheist, uh, what, uh, anarchist, daydreamer idea, because you're such a slave to that mentality. That's the whole point. See, and it goes right back to that whole scarcity thing. Oh, oh there you go. You know, yeah. we, we Terrorist, don't have, scarcity. well, no, yeah. we don't have enough, so therefore right. you have to pay for what you want we don't have enough so you have to work for you know so that only those that are willing to work for and only those that are willing to pay for can have you know like air and water mm. and mm. you know that kind of stuff and oh my wife is still wanting to go to walmart that i is, know she I mean, is squirrel. okay i did what you usually do okay that was fun i like that i'm gonna try that again someday <laughs> oh, you're going to take her to Walmart? 
<laughs> no. Are you kidding? I, I'm not that brave. <laughs> I go to Walmart no, once a month. Thank you. Yeah, but you know what? I have the luxury of YouTube now, and I can see how my fellows behave in public from afar. <laughs> and ah, wow, <laughs> Walmart, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll pass. You know, if we had a close enough Costco, I'd go there or some other place. But yeah, but being still, out in the boonies has its drawbacks. It, well, are they really drawbacks though? There are some I mean, things that are drawbacks, and then there are lots and lots and lots of things that are pluses, and the pluses way outweigh the minuses. Well, you know when Walmart will really make a lot of money? When? Is when they add bars to their stores. <laughs> we, oh, God. Because if, you, if you've ever seen the, the pictures of the, you know, the wildest of the Walmart shoppers, because people go all out to get really done up to get on YouTube in, in a picture. Yeah, people of Walmart, and, yeah. Oh, boy. I, sometimes I send them to Cirque on the train to give her a giggle. She might be having an uncomfortable ride. You know, Watch this. You'll feel better. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I am. Um, wow. So, so I've seen some of them pictures. Yeah, yesterday I'm surfing through um, YouTube, and she's sitting next to me. And I opened up a on redneck, um, this redneck girl and her neighbor, and this she just insane. <laughs> it's fun. It's funny to me because I think that the neighbor goads her and then films her to make her look more ridiculous, and only kind of films certain things and not other things. Uh -huh. So the poor girl always looks like the the ass end of the of the horse, no matter what. Yeah. And so I turned it on. I. I and I plum plan it, and then Cirque watches it. And, and after it's over, she goes, hey, I want to see another one of those. <laughs> 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 that girl's funny. <laughs> well, it's like the, the gal that was uh, talking about how she's going to kick someone's ass in McDonald's or some such nonsense. And the first time yeah. I watched that, I thought, oh, my <laughs> Lord, seriously, there are people like that out there? And then I went to the YouTube, went to YouTube because I'd seen it on Facebook. And then I went to YouTube and, and looked it up and found out <laughs> this gal has a channel. And mm. she does caricatures of, you know, just a, a compilation of, I'm assuming, people that she's exposed to and, and just shit out of her imagination. Yeah. And, and does these crazy ass videos. And I laugh my freaking ass off at her. It's like, oh, my God, woman, you slay me. You do that so well. Because, yeah, it's, she just blows completely out of proportion every bad mm -hmm. stereotype there is possible. And, and it's just hilarious. And it's even funnier when it gets shared on Facebook and people are going, oh, my God, there's really people like that out there. No, honey, she's making fun. It's called sarcasm. It's called snark. It's called get a life and laugh at yourself. Wow. Yeah, you know, speaking of Vince, <laughs> did you know that? <laughs> nice I, segue. <laughs> yeah, back, back in July, it was... Uh, a week you were going to go visit the grandbabies on one of your secret Grammy dork visits. Yeah. And and I was still willing to do the show, but I needed a babysitter. I, I just do not enjoy this alone. So anyway, so I get Vince on here. And Vince had uncovered that the whatever state he was talking about, that the state was prosecuting on a cannabis charge the wrong strain of, of cannabis. Yeah, that the strain that they were that they were in possession of was not the strain that was against the law to have. And I just went and and here's and the reason I brought that up was I heard uh, in gossip, you know, amongst my hippie friends and such over the years that people that are in jail or prison are most of them are there on the under their own consent. Yeah, and. And I never really put that together until I re I listened to Vince do that show with, with that you missed, right? So I was listening to, to some of the old shit to see what we were talking about and if there was anything interesting. And boy, when when it dawned on me that 
the devil is in the details. And if you don't, you don't stand a chance against your enemy, don't fight him. Well, Hal did, and Vince disagree with me, but I'm the king of avoidance. So I just soon avoid that shit all, all of it, then deal with five minutes of it. Yeah. Right? But to think that throughout all this time that they've been prosecuting, they nobody's ever brought up the, hey, this isn't the strain that you're accusing me of having. Wait a minute. Or maybe someone has, but it's gotten thrown out of, you know, whatever evidence that, has been thrown out of court because it's immaterial to the charges brought before the court, yada, 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 yada. I don't know. That would be a Hal thing more more than a me and you thing. But the idea behind it was spawned by Vince. And he brought it up on the show that he did in your stead for me because I needed some help. And, you know, when you're doing the show, you're really not as aware of what's taught, you know, blah, 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 you know from doing it. And yeah. then if you listen to it later, a couple months go by and you listen to it. If there is anything intelligent, you can find it. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Yeah. And I know I give Vince a hard time, but, you know, he really does. When he does know something, he fucking knows it. He's, yes. one, he's like you or Grim or Moose or, you know, name half the people in the fucking room. Even if they're wrong, they're consistent. So if you want that side, go to that person. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like if I ever give in to the um, government thing and become a Republican, <laughs> I could always I could always go to Hanson and ask him for, you know, you know tips on how, how do you you know how do you rub the politicians right so they treat you good is there anything special you got to do to to enjoy their freedom that they give you freedom that they give you wow that's well mm. protect or yeah they, yeah yeah they give you that's, that's what they're fucking claiming that your life is miserable because these pricks over here passed a law that allowed that to happen and you know it's all so fucking ridiculous at this point in time that it's about time everybody got out of their neighbor's ass. That's what the thing about the the girl, the redneck girl. You know, if you're always fucking with your neighbor, why do you live there? Yeah. Is that your version of happiness? That's how you live and you're good with it? I mean, what is your fucking problem? You don't why do you live in that? Isn't is beyond Filming this poor girl that's obviously got some kind of fucking problem, alcohol, drugs, nuts, something, you know, it's not normal behavior, whatever normal behavior is, this ain't it. <laughs> and I think that the woman neighbor plays off it, filming it and putting it on YouTube and entertaining our sick sides, watching that poor girl suffer. Well, you know, it is cheap entertainment. Right. But my, see, I'm such a, I'm such a sap for the, you know, modern day thinking that I believe that most people that act out are doing it because that's what their bodies and their minds are at. That's where they're living. They're not pretending anything. The guy that's pretending is the one that goes to work. Oh, I have fun pretending at work. I pretend See, like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. You fraud, you phony, you faker. Faker, faker, belly aker. No, I love it. I and I actually do. I enjoy working. Exactly. Well, you you're lucky with small community too. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make it a dark requirement on the radio postcard that we will always embrace the small community and shun the large community. Fuck them, you know, and all their special little groups and all that shit. Because, you know. I did. Here we go. Back to Vince. I did some shit with with Jose, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, my wife says to me, "I've had enough." And I thought, "Oh, I just don't feel like listening to the radio. I'm going to lay down." And so she gets up and she goes away, and I'm all cool, still doing the show. And Jose is doing almost all the talking because he doesn't listen. And uh, it took a couple more days after that, and and she, it it came up in a conversation. And I thought she was just saying, oh, I'm going to go lay down when she said, oh, I had enough of this horse shit show you're doing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I don't want to listen to that anymore. <laughs> 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 and, hey, you know, you, you, take the, you take the back slaps with the slaps in the face. 
Yep. Oh, hey. That, the heavy you duty know. pads and a case of chapstick. <laughs> oh, Grim, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> Do I have to? Oh, I'm going to stay an anarchist where it's safe. <laughs> nobody, you know, people don't, they don't look at me and go, hey, I think I'll make you my bitch. So I'm going to stay out of that life. This is what I'm doing is good. <laughs> wow. A pair of heavy duty knee pads and a case of chapstick. Wow. Yes, Moosey. I, I know you do work at your job. And I do work at mine too. But you know, my job is my job is so, I mean, there's some stuff that I have to know how to do that mm. very few people really understand. There is an awful lot of research involved. And mm. the guys see me get frustrated sometimes. But, you know, predominantly, I'd say about 70% of my job is dealing with the public. Mm. And yeah, I and enjoy most of that part. Unnecessary. Yeah, and I'm, most of it's probably unnecessary. Oh, I don't know that, well, you know, the 30%, a lot of that I mm. deem unnecessary because... Mainly because gotta, if you would attend to business properly the first time, we yeah. wouldn't be having mm -hmm. this issue. Well, I got a challenge for you. Okay. If Chevrolet made a car that lasted 100 years, how long would it take you to be out of work? You know, that's that's the that's the little quandary that I have. Um, mm -hmm. Is that you know it? Do you? Build a better product that only requires maintenance and and mm -hmm. a little bit of you know repairs once in a while, or do you mm -hmm. build something that's expendable? And no, I think I, I just well, you, if you and built that's, a car that lasted a hundred years, how long would you have a job if I, that existed right now? Would you even work? I I think I nothing for you. Yeah, I think I would still work just for the simple fact that there's always more people coming into the market. Oh no 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 no! You're taking it you're taking it way far. See, not your personal. Would you work? Would you work at that? That job wouldn't exist unless it was done the deceitful fucking way. It's done from the from the beginning. I'm not knocking your job. I'm knocking the job. Look. If a car was built that lasted for a hundred years, people could give two flying fucks about having the this or a that. They'd get the fucking thing. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Beauty, beauty wouldn't fucking matter. They would be more concerned about, hey, there's something I can use that lasts a hundred years. I don't have to fuck with it. There you go. And all the jobs it would lose because of the disposable economy, which was where I was going, genius. I thought you'd notice. Well, yeah. <laughs> irritated me anyway so it would put you not you personally but would put your job out you wouldn't need it and that's what i'm saying is today at this point 2017 uh -huh. the uh, the technology the materials exist to free mankind from labor Okay, that doesn't mean that people wouldn't want to do stuff. People oh, that's are true. Creative. We're all creative by nature. We like projects and we do stuff. Don't worry about that. That's that MSM working on your fucking skull about yeah. this guy's being negative to well, me. He thinks I don't do nothing at my job. No, I'm saying is your job is not necessary if we lived in an honest, open source fucking economy and used made things that last instead of break down in three months. Yes. Jeez. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I get not, that. And and there is an awful has, lot of work out there that is make work. And a lot of that make work is dependent mm -hmm. on the disposable society. And I'm against the lack of creativity that these people are using. They could be doing so much more important other things. How do you figure somebody figured out how to use hempcrete in the first place? Because some guy was, hey, I wonder what's going to happen if I put some hemp in the in the concrete. Mm -hmm. And that was probably like thousands of years ago. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So we're, this is my argument. I'm not saying people are lazy or bad or anything. I'm saying the opposite. We're made this way because of the fuel sources we use and the energy sources we use. And we're not taught about it. 
we're 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 like un like wild animals with the ability to fire at each other with live ammunition. Yeah. And the proof is in the pudding. You got people shooting each other for some reason, and then it find out, hey, they just pretended to do that to strict stricken to uh, make gun laws stricter. What? Well, it's all a control mechanism. That is true. Oh. And, you know, I think everybody would do something if, you know, big ol' honkin' if, that's an awful big word for just two letters. But if things were different, if it wasn't such a disposable society, and I'm not just talking the products that are put out there. I'm talking about those that believe they are in power and the rest of us that go along with that belief system. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, those yeah. that believe in power also believe that people mm. are disposable. So it mm. disposable society doesn't just mean products or things. It means everything and everyone right. is disposable. You know, once it no longer serves exactly. its useful mm. purpose to whomever. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Look I'll just dispose horrible. of it. Look at how horrible the old people get treated. Oh, I know. And people don't realize, oh, my God, I absolutely treasure the the conversations I had with my grandpa. Some of the yeah. things we would talk about and the things that he saw in his lifetime. I mean, seriously, going from um, moving, you know, or when they moved to a community, it was with a, a horse and wagon and and um you know mm -hmm. you would go into town once a week and mm -hmm. and you would stop and pick up neighbors along the way so that everybody could go and pick up their supplies for the week mm -hmm. that you needed from in town and you went from that lifestyle and also communities the reason why communities are spaced the way they are out here in kansas at least i know this part is because that's a day's wagons ride you know, so people would stop, they would set up camp, then a community would form. <laughs> That's why towns are the distances between them that they are. And, and mm -hmm. once we became a more mobile society, then some of those towns started drying up and blowing away. But, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was born into horse and buggy days and then saw rockets shooting into the air and challenger you know space shuttles and all this other fun stuff can you imagine you know what was oh, going hey, through his man. mind just uh, just the changes from his lifetime and then extrapolate that out to our kids yeah well you made me imagine uh, i was thinking about the presidency thing coming up and and who would who would i want in that seat instead of trump and you ain't going to believe who I came up with. Who's that? <laughs> Rob Works. Oh, there you go. That would be cool. He'd the be last... firing up a bubbler every morning. <laughs> well, no, he's the last guy. When you think about it, all right, I look at Rob, and from what I've seen of him over the time, he likes to do something and do it right. Yep. There you, you want to get high on that shit, he doesn't hold all that against you. Well, you know go get another job i want somebody that wants to do this they'll show up you get you know you get that neck he's got that neck yeah so i was thinking yeah the guy that says and they all suck he'd be the last one that would want to do it and that's the so, one you yeah. want in there because he wants to and, do it right and get out of there <laughs> and then and then i i i thought he'd be the guy that would go and yeah and the fuckers after me are going to do two years and out and once you hold the seat it's done and you can't be related to those fuckers that were in it before me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just an imaginary dork moment because, uh, I don't know. They they think anarchy is the lack of rule. And I think anarchy is the lack of violence to enforce a rule. Yeah, the use of force. I'm negotiable. You know, I don't never have I ever said circle. You get to that kitchen and make me a cup of coffee now, or I skin you alive with a potato peeler. Ew. Because you can only do that once. <laughs> <Then it's> kinda, <laughs> yeah. So what I do is I go, hey, sir, how about some of that coffee? And she gets around to it and makes some. Yeah. Well, there you go. 
And see, I that thing with Rob Works, I read a short story in one of my science fiction books. Um, yeah. About <laughs> Is that a, funny? <laughs> well, no, about a, um, a community that, that um, it was from a, uh, a shipwreck on a distant planet. You know, a world far, far away. Kind of a Star Wars kind of thingy. Detroit? And, no, actually distant planet. Completely oh, different world. Chicago. And Chicago. Um, even farther away than that. <laughs> and and the way they selected the person that had to make decisions for the community um, mm-hmm. is they found the person that wanted it the least. And if you did a good job, okay. you know, if you if you did yeah. a good job at, at make decision making and keeping things running smoothly, then your neighbors would take care of your homestead. While you were away. Mm -hmm. If you did Mm -hmm. a shitty job, your neighbors wouldn't take care of your homestead while you were away. So when you got done with your job and you went back to your homestead, it was a piece of shit. But if you did good, Uh, your uh, neighbors took care of your place, then when you went home, it was like you really weren't away because everything was taken care of for you. You know, and I think that maybe that's a mentality we need to try and adopt, you know. Instead of you being able to be a lifetime leech on the tit of society by being a politician for a lifetime instead of that you're you're a one and done and once you're done when you come back whatever you left to go do your little stint in order Mm. to make things work properly for the bulk then Mm. you know if you did a shitty job then you came back to a shithole if you did a good job you came back like it wasn't like you hadn't even left Maybe yeah, that's the way things need to be run. Right, but see, you'll never get compliance because they've bred that out of our our modern day society. Well, there's entirely they've, too many people at what's in it for me. You don't stop and realize what's in it for you. Be nice to people; they'll be nice back. Yeah, they've rewired us so so well, and they control the way that you take input, and they control the input that you get. And now they've figured out that they have to give you equal amounts of the truth and the bullshit. That'll keep everybody confused. Yep. And nobody knows. See, that's I think the chaos was always there, disguised as order. And now that the internet is exposing the chaos for what it truly is, is just some actors on a stage performing for their, you know, for the people that pay them to do what they're told. It's a show that. It's in a representation of government, and if you if you like actors in society running your you know society, well, that's what you got. I well, I don't know what runs. I think what runs where I'm at more is money, you know, than uh, celebrity. But most of the people here, same as in America, yeah, I don't really see a difference. I cannot find it. If you go to Freetown, then you find all the free people. Well, and then if not all of them live there, the, but the ones that live in Freetown are truly freaking rebels. Yeah. And it's not like a, oh, don't fuck with them. It's, a, oh, I've got lots of respect for people that just want to be left alone to do what they want. There you go. And whenever there's violence, it's always initiated by the outside in. Somebody from the city that's come into town and start shit. You know, you wouldn't hear about, you know, they wouldn't be bothered with it inside. It's a peaceful place. Well, yeah. I mean, you have a small community and the community gets to know each other. And even if they don't, you know, it's like a family. I don't always get along with all of my brothers and sisters. But by God, somebody messes with one of my brothers or sisters, I'll drop kick them through the goalposts of life. Well, that defensive, that's that non-necessary stuff. But it makes me laugh. But I wouldn't want to be the of your point. Let's be clear. Yeah. But I don't want to. Li- I don't want to live in that kind of defensive anger. Everybody's going to get me kind of shit. It's old. I don't live enough. in it, but you know, it is one of right. those things okay. where. Right. Well, you should see the way. The way the internet presents daily life in America. Oh, wow. You know, other countries. You're cutting out real bad. My internet must be sucking or yours is. 
Uh oh. We are having technical difficulties. Mary will sing a nice song for you until for the. <laughs> <laughs> Did that work out? I don't uh, think I'm going to sing a nice song because, yeah, you already let me know uh, that. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Weather Wars live on the RLM. Moose Girl versus Circolo in a 2 0 contest. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> Oh, what? that none of that went through. They're they're having um, weather wars on the oh. RLM. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Cirque says you're you guys are above minus now, so that's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> and she's taking the dog out for a walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Married a crazy Dane, man. Well, Shit. That's okay. Somebody that's had to do it. They, they, she, she's only raised like, I don't know, and it takes about an hour to drive there in traffic from here. So I don't even know how many miles it is, 40. So her big move in life took 40 miles from where she grew up. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then she works there every day, you know, not every day, but then when she's got to go to, to, to work, then she goes to Copenhagen, but... <laughs> Oh, uh, so, well, I know she, she takes makes, a train or, yeah, yeah takes train yeah. into work. Yeah, yeah. But it's still, it's funny to me because my, my trip took me, I'm about 6,000, 7,000 miles away from home. I don't know. I guess it depends on which direction I go in, but it's probably further one way than the other. But it would be a little bit of a trip to go to L.A. from here. Ah, yeah. But she was born 40 miles from here, so, you know, she didn't go far from home. I did. <laughs> ah, well. Yeah. But see, and in, that's in that the whole thing. Home is not a place. Home is home is inside you. Yes, it is. No. Yeah, it is. It, it is to me. Oh, so you're going to dictate what I can consider home? Yes, I, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Wow. Because I am... You break my uh, heart. I'm Grammy DQ. <laughs> I am the dork queen. <laughs> <laughs> I am stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm full of muchness yeah. today. Well, you know, it's all those billions of cells that make me, me. Can you imagine what a board meeting in my head must be like? Oh, Lord. Wow. No, I'm not going to go there. I could just imagine it's like, Hey, you do it. No, you do it. No, you do it. Hey, whose turn is it to do this? You do it. <laughs> now, see, Meeting I, adjourned. <laughs> I, I got that going on inside my head, and every once in a while, there's a voice in, way in the back that says, oh, shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Isn't life predictable? Wow. So, so they throw all this crap in our face, you know, presidentials and elections and wars in syria and oh now they're gonna put tanks and troops on the russian border and scratch old uh, putin's balls for a while yeah they're playing a what? massive game of stratego okay what do you, what sense does this make to you as a as a woman that lives in kansas okay how does this affect you uh, i'm curious let us know miss mary how does that well until they start dropping bombs on my sorry ass it doesn't mm -hmm. and and i think right. it's it's mm -hmm. stupid it's mm -hmm. it's all just you know mm -hmm. dangleberry is strutting he's being potus and he's strutting his tail feathers and all that other fun shit and he's just saying oh yeah oh yeah well i'm gonna do this just to see if you blink and putin is sitting over there going just strut around I can I can lop your head off any time I want to, you know. So I, it it's all just play. It's all a pissing match, you know. And, and okay. Uh, and if it if it comes to bloodshed, I think I think bloodshed is phase three of a war. I mean, I don't know. I've I've read this and that other people's opinions. I think there's three stages, and I think the f violence is the last act. Yeah. Not the first act. Okay. So, I think uh, at this point in time, 
being closer to where this is happening than you, I think it affects me in yeah. ways that I don't want it. I don't want it to affect me because the the steel plant that supports this town is I can see it from my back porch. Yeah, uh, and it's huge. It's a big place. They make big steel things and you know whatnot but it's a russian-owned steel plant or at least they're partners with the danes or some shit like that i don't know but the russians are involved so as a local i don't have a beef with the russians i don't care if they hack the americans fucking asses be honest with you but i don't think they did i just think the bankers are looking for a reason to keep obama in that seat okay now, you brought that up. Because Trump might put up a, a political fight for the, you know, in, in front of everybody. The end result is going to be the same no matter who holds the seat. But it'll go down better with a black face, I think. <clears throat> and then they can blame it on the nigger in history. Go, See, we gave him the keys and black he couldn't drive. <laughs> Told you all along. Uh, see, and that, that reminds me, there was a link that mm. I saw over on Fakie Book. <laughs> Yeah. Russians did not hack the U.S. elections. <gasps> a few facts from a former CIA spy. What? I know. <laughs> I and there's a little. Care. And as far as I got was just the first little quote, and it was, "I'm deeply offended by the lies told by the U.S. government, and more specifically by the CIA, the FBI, the DHS, with the explicit approval of the Director of National Intelligence and the President with respect to Russians hacking the U.S. election. That's by Robert David Steele, an intelligence expert, whatever an expert is. I've mm. always thought that's a, drip, a former drip under pressure, but um, <laughs> in any case, you know, they're throwing all this shit out there trying you know dangleberry is kicking sand in people's faces and everybody okay. else is just standing up and saying it's just sand it's just sand move along little boy and mm. i don't i cannot see putin or whomever being dumb enough to start world war three and that's they the ones over here that are starting this shit, they don't want to be blamed for starting this shit, but they already have. And a lot of people see, you're the ones that are starting it. You're the ones starting it with the name calling and the making shit up and all this other fun crap. You're starting the head games. So you well, have it's, started it's, it. It's safe to say that the MSM still has an audience in the USA, right? Yeah, it does have an audience. I see a lot of it. And it's like, oh, no, Lord. no, I'm, but right. There's still lots of people that watch that. Yeah, that's daily. what I mean. I see a lot that's, of that. Oh, OK. Well, I, I don't. I just get the Internet, period. Yeah. No, no, TV, no, no. I, I won't even old Fox News link to see what they say anymore. Had enough of that or shit. Well, and see, with dealing with the general public and, and part of <laughs> my job is talking with customers and stuff and they will bring up things and i'll just kind of yeah. yeah well whatever they say <laughs> and they Your look stuff. at me <laughs> and i'll kind of start explaining to them <laughs> and then they yeah. they get this weird look <laughs> most of them get a really weird look on their face like wow i hadn't thought of it like that and then a conversation starts, you know, and they will start yeah. bringing things up and I will, I will respond in my typical fashion. Mm. And by the time it's all said and done, they're still talking to me. They're not looking at me like maybe they need to run and hide, mm. you know, and, and nobody's come to take me away with a little straight jacket or anything. So, you know, I'm thinking I might be making a dent on some, but yeah, I see it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. How many people where, believe? Where, wear your Eeyore suit to work tomorrow and, and tell me how nobody will bother you. Or Monday. You know, okay. I've actually done that a time or two. Are, as a normal, like, this is what I'm wearing to work thing? Oh, I've worn or, some pretty like, strange stuff to work before. I should know better. Never mind. Okay. I know your I know your friend's circle, so I shouldn't I should know better than to even start that conversation. Next. 
Yeah. How about the dork top ten links of all time? Uh, I think we ought to have a contest amongst the dork tablers. Gives them give them something to do and submit the top ten links that you ever saw in your life. Could be five seconds, could be two hours, whatever your time thing is. Because there are some incredible shit to know on the internet. And I'm curious so that I could see what the people what they're believing, because then it would give me a better idea. Well, you like this link, this link, that, you know, and you can see the similarities for a change instead of all the differences. Because I was on Twitter, and you want to know what? I saw some crazy fucker twit. What? The story of your enslavement. Right there on the Twitter, and all you had to do is click the button, and you know what it opened up? What? The story of your enslavement. Sweet. And that, and I think that is one of the probably top ten links that I've ever seen. You know, regarding uh, truths exposed. You know, what the truth of this pretend shit you've been doing your whole life. Well, this is what's really behind it. And you're not going to like this at all. And your first instinct is going to be, ah, fuck you, you can't talk to me like that. But after a life of slavery, you will one day kneel before the dark table and relinquish your arms. <laughs> All just be righty. A, just be another dork in the dorky world of dorks. <laughs> well, people just don't realize that they are <clears throat> dorks, I think, <clears throat> is a lot of it. You know, there, and there the are so many people, people out there that are afraid of being a dork because, you know, mm -hmm. they're accepting the negative connotation that goes along with it. And oh, it's yeah. not a negative connotation. It's actually quite freeing. Hey, I'm a dork. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. it's fun. Oh, you hurt me with your four-letter word. Oh. I know. I'm just, I'm just mocking. I'm mocking the society that we've been accustomed to because it's so abnormal. When you think about it, you know, if there's two of you, the common sense thing is to divide what you have between you. Yeah. But in the world that I was raised and grew up in is, if there's two of you, hey, there's a fight. Yeah. Let's let's make it unfair and watch watch one of them attack the other one. Hmm. And I think that's what our society is truly based on, is aggression, violence, negative, anything that makes your dick hard, anything that's, they, they can claim it's good for you in a scientific way, and then emotionally they can show you the flaws in that statement, you know, to keep the bubbles going in this drink of life that we are indulging. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, Happy Bee Dork says the Wayseer Manifesto, which I do. I love that video hey, as well. There you go. There's another cool. video that used to be on YouTube, and I haven't been able to find it. And I'm and I kick myself in the ass because I didn't download the damn thing. But it was mm -hmm. um, I had a dream uh, by mm -hmm. Kashi, and. Mm -hmm. And in that video, it says that if you truly want peace in the world, you have to find the peace within yourself. And Absolutely. And that, yeah. that was an awesome, and that's probably why it's no longer on YouTube. <laughs> probably. But, you know, it's really easy to lose your composure and, you know, act like the idiot you don't want to be. It's our human nature. It's our right to be wrong. Instead of, you don't have to be wrong if you don't want to be wrong. It's a right to be wrong. Yeah, because being wrong, I mean, no innovation, what? no step yeah. forward ever comes without <laughs> finding out what you don't want, what you don't, you know, you got to... You got to screw up once in a while in order to learn some kind of lesson and then go, oh, hey, I don't want to do it that way. <laughs> you know <laughs> or other people will decide what way you do it depending on your age because there are some things that if you're of a certain age you don't have a choice 
True. You don't even know there's a choice to be made. You're mimicking the adults at this point in your life, right? Yes. So the younger they can get you and mold you into that little robot you're going to be someday and do all the proper things and be a stand-up. And if they knew the reality behind all these lies we've been fed since the day we were born, I don't think they'd choose it. You said in the beginning of the show, given your choice, you choose your own. And that's an anarchist kind of mindset. I think, yeah, if given the choice of a clean, stable, comfortable life and the life that everybody is forced to live, I choose the one I like. Yeah. But I don't I don't seriously think that there's too many people in the room that are comfortable with the knowing the deceitful bullshit that they live under. It's the humiliation of it that makes you fight for it. Because it's a humiliating thing. I mean, if my neighbors treated me the way they could, I'm a fucking American. My country's at war with every fucking body. And, you know, I, they could make a target out of me if they felt like it. Yeah, but they don't. Not, not once has anybody ever been rude to me about being an American. And I'm the one that thinks they got a right to. <laughs> but they don't. They're very nice to me here. Well, and maybe that's because the mindset is they take people on, you know, as individuals as opposed to the nationality. And that's what I try to do. You know, I try to take people as, yeah, you can do the whole stereotypical stereotypical thing and, and that's your can be like a first impression kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I prefer to take people as, you know, how I interact with them on a one-on-one basis. And that's yeah. how I decide if I like them or not. Well, it's like talking to Jose when I was doing it with Vince. Uh-huh. What what Jose isn't willing, he's not capable of understanding this, is where I live, I'm him. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. In my uh, surroundings, I'm the Jose here. But in his surroundings, he's just another Jose in millions and millions and millions of Jose's. So... His problem is overexposure. <laughs> you know, instead of being a unique bean in the pile of beans, he's just another fucking bean. <laughs> so they don't they don't revel in his beanness. They just go, Oh, you're just another bean. Shut up. You don't you're not doing me any favors. And see that's where he's focusing, as opposed to yeah. focusing on, you know, yeah. I'm yeah, I may be a bean, but I'm mm. a special bean. Yeah, I don't. I must exude when I walk the streets of Fredericksburg, Denmark. I must be like, hey, there's that beaner guy, man. Because people are nice to me here. I can't figure it. What the fuck? Well, could it be the culture that I'm in is raised with different standards than the culture that I'm from? Uh ding, 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 ding. And what and prize not- do you win for that answer? Yeah, but not to say that occasionally when I'm on my walk somewhere that I don't walk in front of, you know, towards an older woman or older gentleman older than me that doesn't give me a bat of the eye and go, what the fuck are you? (laughs) You know, when they make eye contact, it's like, wow, fuck, what was I thinking? You know, you don't get it. Yeah, because, you know, until you run into somebody closer you can't see what you're looking at from a distance you look like one thing and then you get closer and they go holy fuck yeah. <laughs> i thought it was imagining that and <laughs> it, occasionally <laughs> well some of these people have never been anywhere but denmark and some of them do quite a bit of traveling they're in and out like bugs you know europe's open borders yeah you know but the funny thing about it is uh Europe's not any bigger than the United States, right? Yeah. So if, if a guy lives in Denmark and he, he's been to Germany 50 times, compared to my lifestyle, I mean, that's like living three states away from Kansas. Woo! You know, and traveling back and forth. Woo! Yeah. Big deal. Because the world is so fucking big and people make so much of so little. And they bash places they've never been because they saw a link on the internet. Yeah. It, it just makes me sad. You know? And that brings me to, the, to a thought I had earlier. Um, mm. Unless you are actually there to witness something, 
How do mm. you know what you're being told is real? That's where they want us. That's exactly where we're supposed to be, too. I've thought of that for months now, right? I agree with you, and I, and that's exactly where we're supposed to be. Confused and arguing amongst our own. No unity, no backbone, no support. Well, and it's because of lack of trust. Because, you know, you can't trust what someone anybody. is telling you. Yeah, but you can't. See, there's the mindset. You can't trust anybody. What the fuck? Good God, if me and Circle lived like that, we'd be miserable. Yeah. We and trust it's, everybody. You yeah. know, I brought a Nazi home a couple of weeks ago for a smoke. Did mm -hmm. I tell you that story on the radio? Uh-uh. Oh, I thought I did, so I didn't. Okay. Or I don't I'll remember it. If I did, uh, I'll tell you one more time. I'm down at the... Um, train station to go get some cigarettes on the way back from the grocery store a couple weeks maybe two months back mm -hmm. and there's this hairy fella with tattoos all over his face and neck cleaning this sidewalk with a broom and uh i just was compelled to ask him why what are you doing you know what what do you do this for and he was happy to tell me He's got a dog, and he walks his dog, and he doesn't like that the broken bottle glass, the dog might step on it. So he cleans it up. I went, oh, okay. And then he says, hey, you want to see a picture of my dog? And I went, oh, fuck, me too. I got a dog. Da, da, da. So we start chit-chatting about this and that. Mm -hmm. And, and one, thing, one thing leads to this, and then we're talking about that, and the next thing it's hash, and... Then he's got a pocket full. Of, oh, he gives me some hand. Hey, let's go to my house and burn this. So I bring him to the house. Cirque meets him, blah, blah, blah. And we all sitting there talking, chit-chatting. Well, through the conversation in English, in Danish, he tells her to look him up on the internet. <laughs> ah. And on the internet, because of his political stance in the public eye, mm -hmm. he's a big Nazi. <laughs> ah. And if you look at him, he looks like a fucking Nazi. And one more time, I prove without a doubt that nose to nose most of the time, none of the political shit matters. It matters on a scale bigger than you, not the one you live in. <laughs> yeah. It's an idea. It's yeah. So, wow. It, so he's yeah. over here smoking hash with a Dane and a, uh, and a Jew. <laughs> 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 and see, isn't that that sounds like a a a uh, joke? Right, a Dane, a Jew, story, and a wait. Nazi walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> but to finish the story, uh -huh. so the point of the whole thing is that he was trying to tell Cirque that's what they play me as. That's not really how I am. I I belong to this thing, and but they've overdone it. <laughs> so, you know, the press got a hold of him and added to his uh, reputation. Ah. And embellished on it in ways that he goes, well, and his daughter lives down the street from us. So, you know, he's a normal man that cares a lot about dogs in a way that would probably make other people think he was strange. And he's got a lot of ink. <laughs> okay. And, you know, but I don't know. And he had the Nazi haircut thing. It was hysterical. Me and him standing side to side. Should have took a picture. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But see, to me, a normal day. Yeah. Okay. Grimmy asked me, even if you were there and witnessed it live with your own eyes, how do you mm. know it's real? Yeah. That's where you have to be able to trust yourself and trust your gut instinct. Because if if you're watching something and something feels a little off kilter, mm. then you need to pay attention to that. You know, it's see, you know, and and dread. You have your opinions all you like, dread. It you weren't here, Bucko. <laughs> wow. You know, real. No, what what the fuck is wrong with you? Real. The guy is a fucking Nazi. What I was explaining to you, if you fucking listen once in a while, and to always be talking, is the the press expound. They expanded his belief system and went way further than it was ever intended. Well, that's Not because that that's he wasn't a Nazi. 
but that's what the press does. The press focuses mm -hmm. on just one thing and blows it completely out of proportion. Just like that gal that, that does the videos making fun of rednecks. Just like, mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty much anyone else. Anybody that's a satirist. Or like the story that you were telling earlier. Oh, that kid ran across the stage naked. It has it. <laughs> yeah. it, it blew everything else out of the water just to yeah. focus on that one detail and that's yeah. what a lot of people do especially with the name calling and the label placing and all mm -hmm. that other fun shit okay you want to place a label on me call me a grammy what yeah. picture does that put in your mind it puts a little old lady that sits in a rocking chair and knits all the time and she's this about as big around as she is tall you know, Dogs and, and cats fight over her. <laughs> yeah, you know, and she just yeah. kind of mutter, puddles around and mutters to herself and all. Okay, I do resemble that one. But the mm. rest, of, and I do have gray hair, but the rest of mm. that, I am I am so far from what the typical, the atypical Grammy is. <laughs> but, you know, oh, um, wow. you could call me a hippie. You could, you can call me all kinds of shit. And that might be one particular aspect of my personality, mm. but that is not mm. all of who I am. And that's what people need to stop doing. Stop focusing on one particular part of someone's personality and get to know the whole personality, or at least as much as that person is willing to share wow. with you. You yeah. know, because then, then you would probably mm. look at them a little bit differently. You would, you would no longer look at them like a label. You would look no, at them so, like a no. person, like another individual. Some people individual. are incapable. No, I disagree. Look what Dred's right. He's not capable. That was the point of what my what I was trying to tell you. This man is telling me I'm a Nazi. I'm not. Uh, I don't hate people because of their race. I, it's different. Eh, I didn't want to go into it. I didn't care. You smoke. We're smoking in the house or have a cup of coffee. I don't really give a shit. Talk to the wife in Danish. Don't give. I don't give a fuck. You know, I don't care what fucking program he belonged to. All I care about is he was protecting animals. He was cleaning up and he had hash and he got along with me. So we went to burn some big deal. Whether he was a Nazi or not is incidental. It only matters to an idiot. Yeah, well, it's the label thing. You know, everybody just Whatever. focuses be, on the yeah. damn label as opposed you to the nice person. You be nice about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you go ahead and be nice about it. I'm just saying out loud that yeah. anybody concerned with all that shit, you can call it a label. I call it stupid. You can't look around you and just feel good in life without calling somebody something. I was trying to show you that all that shit is a bunch of crap. It's all yeah. in your fucking mind. It is. You read too much. Get out in the world and mix with these people. You find out there's nothing to hate. They're just people everywhere you go. And all this crap the government and the media puts on us about each other is horse shit. Yeah. And you guys with the guns, if anybody invades your country, you're going to be just like the terrorists are where we're invading. So remember that and be glad it's them and not us. Yeah. I, I, I don't want them. Yeah, I don't want them attacking Denmark for fuck's sake. See, and I, I saw something about that not too long ago. And uh. and it was um, a person of Arab descent that said, mm. and I know I've brought this up couple years ago even on uh, my rocket chair you know imagine how you would feel if all of a sudden someone decided to just bomb the piss out of your house even if you had some kind of advance warning and you were going out to try and stop that from happening and you told your family just stay here you'll be safe here and then you come home and your home is gone and mm. your family is gone how would you feel wouldn't you would feel like going out and doing it right back at them and see? I would. Yeah, I would. And that's that's Definitely. the position we put those people in by going over there and bombing the piss out of them for their own good. We're going to put some democracy in your ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We've been living under that life for a long, long time. Let's see how long it lasts. Yeah. Because somebody has to be told to kill. People that go to war, I don't, I don't, 
I've never ran a war, but I would say that they're, they've got orders to do this and told to do that. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, then something's wrong with the whole equation to me. I don't think violence solves anything. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. I think sitting down with the big bong and going, let's we're going to smoke this until we're eating Cheetos. And we like it. So we're going to work this problem out. And that's how people don't want to work. They call them peace talks. They send some fucking banker's fucking dick sucker in a three-piece suit 10,000 miles away to get drunk and fuck whores. And they call them peace talks. They got the nerve to do this shit year in and year out since time began. Well, it's a peace talk because peace is spelled differently. <clears throat> get okay. the peace. Well, you can, yeah, okay. Ah, to you, Mary. Ah. But, I mean, I, this really angers me that my species is still throwing shit at each other like a bunch of fucking apes. Still burning fucking oil. Just, they need permission from their government to burn a fucking weed because this group of idiots in this state says it's good and this group of idiots says it's not good and what what whatever happened to personal freedom in that i came from you you do what you can live with you know and you're not hurting anybody smoking a fucking gr- bit of fucking grass yeah but i've seen a guy throw a fucking bottle at somebody else drinking a beer yeah and who's, you know? who's being the hateful shit there? <laughs> well, well, yeah. what, what I, all I'm, I'm getting at here again one more time, it always seems to elude certain people, is we are raised in a, we're raised to be violent, angry, uh, protective. All the negative shit is brought out of us. For fuck's sake, man, Cirque is the nicest woman I ever met in my fucking life. I mean, she's just happy all the fucking time. And at first I thought, oh, this has got to be some kind of performance or something. And something's wrong with this. No, I grew up in a fucking hateful, uh, everybody wanted your shit, steals your shit, takes your shit, tries to rob you. You, you know, you got to survive and all cutthroat and all that kind of shit. And then I came to, uh, and it's not the country, it's the person. Cirque's just got this thing about she doesn't pay attention to all that shit out there. It doesn't affect her. Yeah. Well, she's not in that frequency. Well, there you go. Whatever you call it. But I had to go all the way to Denmark to find one <laughs> that yeah. fit my frequency. No, because my frequency is obviously not a typical frequency. Whatever it is. I'm emitting a strange frequency. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, Rob's coming on in 15 minutes till you guys get to listen to smart people talk about important shit that doesn't even involve you. Or Mm. it could be little lessons that could teach you how to make your life a little bit better. There you go. I don't have to be optimistic today. I took the day off. I'll be optimistic next Saturday. Okay. You do that. I try to be optimistic every day, just for the simple fact that, son of a bitch, I woke up again. Wee! So. Well, I have to thank Grimner for straightening me out on. Now, I for a minute there, I thought maybe being a Republican might improve my life, but when I saw what you have to get to the starter kit, woo! No, thank you. Yeah. I'll stay where I'm at. Yeah. Woo. Pass a roo. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so when are you going to give up the, um, what do you call it? The car, the car business and come visit, um, Denmark. We'll show you off to all our Danish friends. (laughs) Hey, look, we've got an American. Want to come see it? (laughs) (laughs) We'll keep it behind a glass or in a glass enclosure so it doesn't throw poop at you. (laughs) Put you in your Eeyore suit and turn you loose. Oh, there you go. Oh, that would be fun. (laughs) That would be fun. Yeah, uh, and Cirque's friends are, and her family are just the kind of people that, you know, they they don't judge shit until they know what they're judging. Yeah. They actually have the ability to stay out of other people's affairs. It is just a wonderful fucking life. 
I've never had a bad word with anybody in her family. Cool. About anything. No, if we disagree, we don't even fucking know it because we're speaking two different languages. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you a quick one, right? A couple of months during the summer, um, I was doing the radio. No, I was getting ready to. I think it was a weekend because Ollie was here visiting with the family. And so we had a house full of people. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, Ollie needed an axe. Ollie's 12 years old. Uh huh. Okay. So I went and got the axe. Sharp didn't give it to him. Hmm. Well, a okay. twelve-year-old that you don't question. What do you need the axe for before you give it to him? Because I already know from him being here so many times that he's working on some wood project in the backyard. Yeah. And well, so I don't need to ask. And you right, know the, the individual. The, but the freedom. Well, no, because even a twelve-year-old kid with an axe. It's a questionable thing under normal circumstances for me. If I was home and when the kid said, hey, got an axe? What? <laughs> I'm going to do some surgery on my sister. No, I don't think so. <clears throat> That's what I would have expected back where I'm, where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah, but, but here, you're not in that mindset anymore. No, that was a living set. <laughs> oh, man, those people were violent. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you couldn't trust them to be alone. You just knew they were going to do something horrible to each other. Well, yeah, but that's, you know, that's kind of the vibe that you get from where what you are surrounded by. You know, I if I were to have, well, if it, okay, let me just put it to you like this. If one hmm. of my neighbors right across the road would come over and ask me uh, if I have an axe, I would question that individual because... Okay, I can see their property, and I would go, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> but what, if it was a kid that lives do? about three blocks down in this lovely little two blinker that I live in, um, mm -hmm. that came up and asked me, do you have an axe or, you know, hedge trimmers or something like, you know, the, the yard things, whatever, for cutting branches. <sighs> I don't know the technical term. I just use them. Uh, but if he, if one of those kids were to come up and ask me for something like that, I'd go, oh, sure. When are you going to bring it back? Hmm. That's pretty much, but that's because I know the kids, you know, and that's, that's, and I think that's what he was trying to get across, Sock Puppet, is that, um, small society you does don't, not don't You don't make yeah. judgments until you actually Listen. have some of the yeah. facts to, make an educated judgment <laughs> maybe that no what i was yeah well in my in your way how you interpret he interpreted it his way i'm just yeah. saying i've never been involved with a female with a family attached to her that didn't come out swinging at me like i was some kind of bad guy from the very start wow this this relationship they didn't judge. They just went along with, she's happy. They didn't care what I look like, how old I was, didn't bother. None, none of my personal whatevers, they don't give a fuck about any of that. And they've treated me the, the same from the day that uh, I got here till now. Nothing's ever shifted. Well, that's because they gave themselves time to get to know I don't you. know. I... <laughs> I don't really think because of the language barrier that they can really say they know me, but what they do know is that Cirque's okay. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, if Cirque wasn't okay, that they'd still stay the fuck out of it. It would be her business. Oh, yeah. They would just not be so nice to me. Well, my family does the same thing. You know, they... Yeah, you can't... Taking sides in a relationship situation is always a friendship suicide. You know, if your buddy, see, like I had a buddy and his girlfriend was doing horrible shit and he, later on he found out and he says, well, I said, yeah, I knew. He goes, well, why didn't you tell me? I said, it wasn't any of my fucking business to tell you. It wasn't, she didn't tell me. I was, I was just walked somewhere I shouldn't probably have been and saw and what was there to say? What if I'd have been wrong, thought it was her and it was somebody that looked like her? I mean, no, 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 no. So my rational behavior, and he talked it with me, okay, I understand what you mean, but, you know, you could have told me. I said, I'm not a snitch. 
either. Yeah. Top. Mm. It's not my place. I don't look, look, if I saw somebody commit a fucking murder, I probably wouldn't say anything about it. It's not my fucking business. I don't know why they did it. I have no clue. I've seen enough of law in my life to know you get involved in that shit and you go too. See, and and that's where I differ. I because I you watch TV and they solve crimes with the forensics no, in sixty no, minutes, all that no, horse shit. No, no. Fuck, they hang the first fucker they can blame, and where I've seen it. See, and and uh, I I would step in just for the simple fact that whoa, wait a minute here, that's wrong. Don't be doing that shit. Because of course I'm I'm that Grammy lady at the this is this is a typical thing. I'm that Grammy lady that at Walmart or wherever, if I see someone else's kids going through and breaking open packages or something like that, I call the kid out. And I also point it out to the parent. And if they don't straighten that shit out, you know, if there's a Walmart associate close by, then I go, uh, Hmm. excuse me. I Hmm. do that. And do you know why? Hmm. Because if you don't, if people don't start taking a little bit of responsibility for that shit and start making others take responsibility for that shit, then, you know, for their own shit, then that's how you get where we are right now. You know, so, so, yeah. That's why I disagree with the method, though, is it's in the teaching and the core belief of the parent is what drives the, the child. And most of us alive. Me as well were raised on that horrible competition, greed, win, do whatever it takes to be number one thing. And if you leave it behind, you get called a quitter. Well, yeah, fuck, call me whatever you want. Who wants to really spend all their energy doing that anyway? It, it's fruitless. And Oh, but you could be number one and do what? What, what, what does that prove? What does it do? Nothing. Actually waste your time when you could have been working with other people t- to accomplish something. I never had a, a, a job where I worked with other people hands-on where we didn't build something and it took a whole fucking lot of us in different areas to do the whole project. So working together, was a, it was a benefit. Yeah. You know, if somebody had the wherewithal to do the proper planning to do the job correctly, everybody got paid. But not everybody has that kind of thinking process. They just see, I got a job, I'm going to do it. They don't think about order and what color wire to use. They, you know, wire, let's put some wire. No. Yeah. It's it's not how it works. You know, and I, 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 all the, all the arguments and the fightings about being right. You know, all I said was, I met a guy in the street, turned out to be a freaking Nazi on a personal level. It didn't hold any water. He wasn't a racist. He's just a Nazi. So what? Doesn't impress me. Didn't impress him that I'm a Jew. We were just smoking in fucking pipe load. Big deal. Yeah. Politics is all in your mind. That proved it to me. That's that was the of all the nails I've ever seen. That nail just at this time in my life was perfect. Two old guys smoking a fucking bowl together and drinking a cup of coffee in peace. You know. Well, wow. and that's that's basically what, what it breaks to down about. to. Individuals. But it's so easy to do. Well, if more people would do it, less people would fight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? We are down to the wire. So y'all been listening to the door cable. Yeah, I know you did. Thanks a lot for playing. We played Nazi trivia for 5,000, Johnny. There you go. Be sure to stick around. Hitler's knob before he died. Oh. Yeah. Ava Braun. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I wasn't there and I'm glad. Rudolph. (laughs) Oh, well, be sure to stick around, everybody, because Rob Works is coming up next with Smoke and Mirrors, and I'm sure that is going to be absolutely amazing, and I haven't gotten a text yet, so I'm thinking I'm going to get to listen in. Also, directly following Rob will be Kira with The Bridge, and then this evening will be Bo Diddy with some bodacious tunage. Also, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time is Grimner with some blues. To lead you Mm -hmm. into Hal Anthony, where he's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. And it's all going to be mental whoop-ass, because this is cybernetic, and whatever is done cybernetically, at least in chat rooms and Facebook and that kind of shit, 
Unless yeah. you let it, it won't hurt you. Also, tomorrow evening, The Road Less Traveled with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Be sure to tune in. That's at 7 Eastern Time. I'll be back Wednesday with the Wackadoodle mm. Wednesday edition of The Rocket Chair. And until then, I'm going to actually let Flash Rooney get the last word in. So here you go. What? <laughs> oh, man. And I did that just to. <laughs> <laughs> the gotcha. last word. <laughs> well, and you're all choked I up. Think, I think that uh, I'd like to give the world a gift. And the gift would be the truth. The truth about everything, fuckers. It's horrible, but you deserve it. There you I go. Mean, that's what I'm, mm. I don't know. Sounds like We're a plan. We're just people. Yeah, it's, you know, be nice to the next guy because someday you might need him or he might need you. And it's a whole lot easier to do that when you get along. Yeah. Remember, the toes that you step on today might be the boot up your ass tomorrow or the feet you need to kiss. 